Hello and welcome. This is 117 Things You May Have Missed in Halo 2. Number 1. The Prophet's Truth, Mercy, and Regret's headpieces all have a holographic halo ring at the center of their crowns. If the player jumps around the armory, Master Sergeant Guns will tell Master Chief to settle down. When you're ready, come meet me by the zapper. Hey, take it easy! Careful, you'll tear a tendon doing that! A Covenant boarding craft can actually be seen latching itself onto the station. The machine gun turret has a frowny face on it. A unique wounded marine can be found in the hangar bay where the Malta mag platform explodes. His face, body, and armor are all bloody, cut up, and bruised. This wounded marine model was ultimately cut from the final game. Master Sergeant Guns has different lines he says to the elites depending on what difficulty the player plays on. Get the hell out of my armory, split off! Oh! Call your friends, I got enough ammo for all- Ow, oh, dang it! Ugh. Come on now, is that a weapon or- Oh god! Oh. It is also, sadly, impossible to save Sergeant Guns from his elite attackers. This room before the drone attack has some wonky graphics with an extremely low graphical clarity and poly count. Several dead ODSTs can also be seen throughout this section of the level. When Cortana starts firing the Mac gun, the gun actually has an animation where it launches the round into space and then winds back up for another shot. Regret's carrier can be seen flying past Cairo Station. The carrier that Chief ends up destroying can be seen flying past later in the level. There's a random hidden marine where the Covenant have set up their bomb. Maybe he's hiding out. Seven seconds are all the time that is left on the Covenant bomb, a reference to Bungie's favorite number. Cortana says different lines to Chief when he's waking up, depending on the difficulty. You all right, Chief? Shake it off, Marines! Clear the crash site! Go, go, go! Hey, wake up! Shake it off, Marines! Talk to me. Should I start CPR? What's going Shake on? Shake it off, Marines! Blink if you can hear me, Chief. Shake it off, Marines! The Blind Skull has four grenades and a spotter's optic sight next to it, a clue to the Skull's ability. If the player sticks hunters with plasma grenades, the hunters will become stunned for a short period of time. The player can skip most of the beginning of this level by going across several of the rooftops. This is particularly helpful when playing Legendary and trying to avoid those horrific jackal snipers. There are no pilots flying the pelicans in the entire game. An easter egg with an energy sword and the word Rex spelled in rocks can be found in the top of this destroyed building. If the player sneaks up on these grunts, they have some humorous dialogue. Us nice and safe up here! <laughs> these AA guns placed along the beach are the same ones seen during the Halo 2 E3 demo. This section here is the only time shadows are seen in the entire mainline series of games, which is a real shame because they're a really cool vehicle. The Shadows turret is also arguably the strongest vehicle turret besides the Scarab's main gun in the original trilogy. Sergeant Johnson says a different speech depending on which difficulty the player chooses. No, sir. Then listen up. You had your chance to be afraid before you joined my beloved corps. But to guide you back to the true path, I brought this motivational device. Our big green style cannot be defeated. You hit Marine. No, sir. Then listen up. The chief is going to jump in this tank. 
roll across the bridge and blow up any inhuman son of a bitch dumb enough to get between him and the prophet of regret. Pull yourself together, because you're going with him. You hit Marine. No, sir. Then listen up. When I joined the Corps, we didn't have any fancy schmancy tanks. We had sticks, two sticks and a rock for a whole platoon. And we had to share the rock. Buck up, boy. You're one very lucky Marine. You hit Marine. N no, sir. Then listen up. Usually the good Lord works in mysterious ways, but not today. This here is 66 tons of straight up H.E. spewing divine intervention. If God is love, then you can call me Cupid. The chapter card titles also change depending on difficulty. If the player is playing on lower difficulties, it will read Ladies Like Armor Plating. If the player is on higher difficulties, the chapter will read Ladies Like Superior Firepower, a reference to Sergeant Johnson's line. If the player finds the Rex Easter Egg Energy Sword, uses all of its ammo, then takes it with them into the next level, the sword will have unlimited ammo, even though its plasma blade is inactive. I loved her. For real. Yeah. Hey, yep. There's another marine with a rocket launcher hiding on this part of the bridge that will help assist the player. The wraiths that get dropped off at the end of the bridge by these phantoms can be shot down before they reach their destination. If you hop up on these boxes, you can flank and kill the camouflage elites waiting to ambush you. If you blast your way into this destroyed building, a giant soccer ball can be found. It's totally interactive, the player can move it around the map. This sign has an insurrectionist recruiting advertisement. This company sign is Barrett spelled backwards a reference to Bungie level designer Chris Barrett. The player can board this pelican that drops off reinforcements. Just simply hold your action button and you'll automatically board the dropship. The pelican will then fly outside the map and eventually crash land on some invisible ground. The player can then freely move around and even try to flip the pelican with it incorrectly saying flip Banshee instead. the player can prevent the destruction of the scorpion tank by the scarab. If they shoot a single rocket killing the marine, the scarab's beam will go right through the tank not damaging it. If the player melees this box, this rocket launcher will float in mid-air. If the player stands on this spot in front of the scarab, they will glitch through the front part of the scarab being able to see and shoot the covenant inside. When the Scarab reaches its final destination, Pelicans will make strafing runs and shoot missiles at the Scarab. The song playing in this part of the opening cutscene is actually speech played backwards. After the Phantoms drop off the Spec Ops team, the player can watch them spiral out of control and crash out of the map. It's easier to see this in anniversary graphics. The orange lights on the Elite's armor are actually energy shield indicators. They will glow brightly when an Elite's shields are full and go dim and eventually go out completely when their shields are fully depleted. The Elite hacking this door is faking it. If he's pushed, he'll still move his fingers around nothing and the door will still open without him. These heretic elites will have a short conversation here regarding their missing allies, the Flood, and the Oracle. Any word on our missing brothers? Still nothing. And given what sleeps here, I fear they are lost. Surely the Oracle will protect us. Perhaps, but its sentinels are too few. Better we protect ourselves. You can activate the hangar bay lift switch through the wall here. The sentinels will sometimes fire a green beam at the Seraph fighter, possibly repairing it. The player will be unable to fully go outside the hangar, with the strong winds preventing them from doing so. 
The heretic leader has some unique dialogue here. Deal with him, my brothers. I will defend the Oracle. His truth must not be silent. While most players might fly straight to the heretic leader's location, ending the mission, if the player follows their phantom, it will take them throughout the Forerunner facility, where they can see the beginning of the level and sections of the next level. The Flood can be faintly seen attacking heretic forces in the lab below the Spec Ops team. These Spec Ops grunts have some humorous dialogue regarding the increasingly scary situation. Me have bad feeling about this. You always have bad feeling. You had bad feeling about morning food nipple. Close your jaws, or I shall bind them shut. The heretic leader's hologram makes grunts and noises as if himself is getting hurt. See, heretic! Ah! Ah! Hold your fire. Hold your fire. He's using a hologram. He must be close. Ah! The Spec Ops commander will offer his energy sword if the player doesn't already have one. Take my blade. I doubt the cable can withstand its bite. If the player does already have an energy sword, his dialogue will change. Keep your blade handy. I doubt the cable can withstand its bite. The player can cut the cables holding the facility in place without using an energy sword. After the player cuts all three cables, the Flood and Sentinels will stop fighting and look up, right before the facility drops. You can also see the facility drop from the larger Forerunner station by looking above them. This grunt in the opening cutscene can be seen playing with different objects depending on what difficulty the player is playing on. The player can find extra rocket launcher ammo above this structure. There's also lots of extra sniper rifles and rockets hidden throughout this level, next to dead ODSTs. This opening battle of the level can be skipped by simply walking away. If the player is using a Warthog with Marines and they stop to look at the surrounding landscapes, some unique dialogue will play between them and Sergeant Johnson. Whoa. Dear Sarge, kicking ass in outer space, wish you were here. I heard that, jackass! The grunts guarding the bridge and using turrets wield plasma rifles instead of the usual plasma pistols and needlers. The hologram of the Prophet of Regret will hum the Halo theme song. If the player waits long enough around each one of Regret's holograms, he will eventually speak in English, with multiple speeches regarding everything from the history of the Covenant to the Prophet's promise of the Great Journey. Regret's giving a speech, a sermon to be exact. So far it's the standard Covenant liturgy, but I'll translate if he says anything interesting. The Forerunners, our most exalted lords, use the seven sacred rings to flee a doomed existence to escape their endless struggle against the Flood. Long ago, the Prophets and Elites fought an equally fruitless war. Indeed, I suspect we would still be at each other's throats had the Prophets not found evidence of the Forerunners and their great journey. In a gesture of peace and reconciliation, the Prophets promised to find the means of the Forerunners' transcendence and to share this knowledge with the Elites. The elites promised to defend the prophets as they searched. A simple arrangement that has become our binding covenant. Transcendence, huh? More like mass suicide. Every member of the covenant shall walk the path. None will be left behind when our great journey begins. That is the prophet's age-old promise. And it shall be fulfilled! Great journey? Doesn't he know what these rings do? 
the player can see the sentinel wall that appears later in the game. If the player moves this stone, they can find two dead grunts and two dead energy swords inside. The player can actually snipe the Covenant patrols far across the bridge. At the top of the tower where the player goes underwater, a sleeping grunt with a fuel rod gun can be found. I usually leave him alone. Usually. The player can see the jackal spawn into the elevator that goes underwater. If the player activates the elevator and then quickly hops out, they will be faced back into the underwater car. These grunts with active camouflage are not Spec Ops grunts, making them the only grunts in the series that use camo but are not Spec Ops soldiers. The grunt and elite honor guards that defend regret are endlessly spawning in. It's impossible to kill them all. After the player kills the Prophet of Regret, he will drop a plasma pistol, which is later referenced in the book Halo The Cole Protocol. If the player looks past the platform and down into the surrounding landscape, they can see where the previous level took place. If the player destroys the Constructor Sentinels, it will cause regular Sentinels to come out and attack the player. These Jackals that aid the player are the only time in the entire mainline series where Jackals fight alongside the player and are your allies. If the player gives a Jackal a Carbine, they will use it with their shield still active. All brute bodies throughout the beginning of this level have regular plasma rifles instead of brute plasma rifles. The player can skip fighting the sentinel enforcer by simply activating all the switches to unlock the sentinel wall, which will automatically destroy the enforcer. The player can see marines fighting the flood across the way here. This facility that gets shot down in front of the library is actually a sentinel factory that produces sentinels, sentinel majors, and sentinel enforcers. The sentinel enforcer can destroy any vehicle by using its claws to crush its enemy. Halo 2, and by extension Quarantine Zone, are the only time in the original trilogy that the Flood can be seen using vehicles. Miranda's Pelican can be seen flying past the player on its way to the library. This debris that the player has to navigate through is actually the Sentinel factory that was seen being shot down in the previous level. This Sentinel shoots needler needles instead of its regular Sentinel beam. Some of these weapons, like the Battle Rifle and Sniper, have extra reserved ammo for each. When the player is on the gondola, the In Amber Clad can be seen hovering in the background. If you hide in this section of the gondola, no Flood can attack you, allowing the player to bypass fighting the Flood throughout the entire ride. The rope Miranda uses to retrieve the Activation Index is a Gravemind Appendage. When playing on this level on Legendary, a cutout of Bungie's co-founder, Jason Jones, can be seen among the crowds of grunts and jackals. When this grunt turns and flees from Master Chief, he's missing his running animation. If the player is playing on Legendary, the Brute Captain with a Brute Shot will spawn in the Council Chamber instead of the outside grav lift. The player can actually destroy these grav pillars that line the outside platform of the Council Chamber. Cortana has multiple lines if the player hesitates to use the grav lift. I'll reverse this grav lift. Drop down, try to cut him off. It's safe, really. Just step in. After that stunt on the Cairo, I know you're not afraid of heights. Fine. I won't watch. Meet you at the bottom, okay? You don't actually have to use the grav lift to go down to the next section of the level. Just use the sides of the walkway. When escaping the prison section, if the player is fast enough, they can just stand and kill all the Covenant enemies coming down the lift with assassinations. It's easiest if you use a Brute Shot.
All of these honor guard corpses are ultra honor guards wearing white armor instead of the regular red armored ones. When Cortana detects the slip space jump inside High Charity by the in amber clad, the player can actually see the ship come out of slip space and fly over them, crashing out of sight. Slip space rupture. It's in amber clad. No response. These panicking grunts that are being slaughtered by berserking brutes will not attack the player if all the brutes are killed. The energy sword will correctly not have a shadow since its blade is made out of plasma which isn't a solid material. The last elite that the player fights at the end of this level an elite counselor has glitched armor that will change and sometimes combine multiple sets of armor together each time he loads in. This elite who says the line, Bruce have betrayed us, the counselors, has his mouth glitched out where his mandibles do not move. You can fix this glitch by simply meleeing him before he speaks. Bruce have betrayed us, the counselors. Elites will sometimes stop over the dead bodies of grunts and elites and say a prayer, wishing them safe passage on the great journey. He is no more. Your journey has begun, brother. Now you walk the path. Please, no hurt. Me like elites. Brute stinky bad bad. Me stay here, make sure no brutes come behind, mighty arbiter! <laughs> Several brutes can be seen wielding human shotguns throughout this level, even sometimes testing them out. This elite has some dialogue regarding his disgust with the brute's trophy weapons. What vulgar taste! Even as trophies, these weapons are worthless! Whatever weapon the player was last using, the arbiter will have it with him during the ending cutscene. There is still a working phantom left on the platform at the beginning of this level. It's kind of funny because one would think Cortana could help Chief pilot it, making the plan to stop Truth before he reaches the Forerunner Keyship an actual possibility. In this gigantic open room with the grav platforms, with brutes and drones fighting the flood, the player can see massive reflective shards hanging from the ceiling. These are shards from the numerous glass planets that the Covenant has conquered. This dead brute spawns with different brute models and armors. Sometimes it's a regular captain, sometimes it's an honor guard, and every so often it's the chieftain of the brutes himself, Tartarus. If the player starts this level on Legendary, the Spec Ops commander will refuse to get out of his wraith, forcing the player to use the Spectre. The player can swap weapons with the elite counselors who are still imprisoned in the force fields. The imprisoned elites and hunters who get freed will try to release any other captive allies. The elite counselor's helmet resembles the head of the queen alien in the movie Aliens. During this firefight, the marine prisoners are shown as allies even though Sergeant Johnson and the Arbiter haven't called a truce yet. Sergeant Johnson has multiple lines if the player is in the way when he tries to destroy the door of the control room. You trying to get killed? Give me some room! What? Do I have to spell it out for you? Move! Listen, I'm gonna count to three. One... Two... Don't say I didn't warn you. Hey, bastard! Knock, knock! The player can actually access the revolving platform that Miranda Keys is taking cover on. If the player crouches at the bottom level where they fight Tartarus, they will kill themselves. This is because the player is going past the invisible kill barrier if they crouch. And number one, one, seven. 
the player can bring a beam rifle and use it to deplete Tartarus' energy shield themselves, killing him insanely fast. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe. You want to support the channel even more? Become a channel member and get access to exclusive perks while simultaneously helping me make more videos. Thanks for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.